insulin resistance, it turns out, is a underlying, you know, risk factor root cause of sleep apnea, as well as periodontal disease. You know, a few weeks ago, I actually was talking to a conference of periodontists and, you know, went through all of the literature about the associations between periodontal disease and heart disease. And it turns out that, you know, insulin resistance is a common root cause there. Uh, most people with periodontal disease are insulin resistant, and therefore they're also at risk for heart disease. Now, there have been some other theories about, you know, the periodontal disease introducing bacteria into our bloodstream, which then causes inflammation that damages the blood vessels. And there's probably some validity to that as well. The, the kind of scientific evidence to support that is that when they look at atherosclerotic plaques, oftentimes there are bacteria in them. And many of the times those bacteria are the same bacteria that we see in the mouth. So that may be playing a role as well. When we look at sleep apnea, again, sleep apnea is strongly associated with insulin resistance and may be an indicator of insulin resistance. But sleep apnea is also going to be putting extra stress on your heart. You know, basically every time you stop breathing, you know, during the night when you have sleep apnea, that's going to cause usually your blood pressure to go up, your pulse rate to go up. It's going to be putting uh, physiologic stress on the heart, which can contribute to the development of atherosclerosis as well. If you have high cholesterol, high LDL cholesterol, and you're insulin resistant, that's a problem. Because again, it's very likely in that scenario that you're going to have the poor quality, the small, dense LDL cholesterol. So if you're not going to do something about the insulin resistance, then yeah, take a statin. It's going to give you a little benefit. And people need to understand that that benefit is very little. It's nowhere near the big numbers that are thrown out there, 30%, you know, 50% reduction in disease. Those are, you know, that is statistical manipulation where they use something called the relative risk reduction instead of the absolute risk reduction. So when you look at the absolute risk reduction, the true reduction in risk, the numbers are more like three or 4%, which of course sound nowhere near as impressive. And the flip side of that is, you know, if you're taking these medications for decades, you're exposing yourself to the negative effects of these medications. And one of the most prominent negative effects of taking statins over the long term is that it increases your risk of becoming insulin resistant. It increases your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And since these are primary drivers of heart disease, this is why I think the overall you know, data on statins is so disappointing because maybe it's you know, lowering your cholesterol level a little bit, but if, at the same time, it's making you more insulin resistant. It, it really may be increasing your risk of heart disease, you know, as a net effect. Um, so, you know, there are perhaps some other scenarios, but, you know, again, I have the conversation with patients about insulin resistance. Let's address that. And once you're no longer insulin resistant, we've really never shown any benefit to taking these medications, you know, in that circumstance. And so put yourself in a position where the medication is certainly is simply not going to be a benefit for you. And I think that's the best answer. But if you're not going to do that, then yeah, there may be some benefit to taking these medications. Yeah. You know, I think the unfortunate thing from a practitioner standpoint is, you know, practitioners have been put in the position of thinking, of believing that the only way that they can help patients, you know, mitigate heart disease risk is by prescribing these medications. And, and again, nothing could be further from the truth. You know, low carbohydrate diets, addressing insulin resistance, you know, are much more powerful ways that we can help people. But most practitioners don't know that you know, they're not aware of it. And it's not that they're withholding information from patients. It's they're truly not aware of it. And like I said, the only thing I heard in medical school and the first half of my career as a heart surgeon was, you know, just lower the patient's cholesterol. 
And that's the way that we can deal with heart disease. 